Hello everyone. With this video it's going to just be a set of instructions on how to use the tools in this gizmo on measuring volume. Um, but it's going to also serve two other purposes. One, it will teach you how to read a graduated cylinder. Uh, these three objects here are our graduated cylinders. And it will also teach you how to find the volume of an irregular shape like this rock, for example. This rock is not a rectangular prism or a sphere, so we can't use a mathematical formula to calculate the volume. So instead we use something called water displacement, and we will go through that as well. Uh, first, let's look at finding volume of these three different cylinders that I have set up. And in this gizmo, to, to get a better look, we use the magnifying glass. And when you bring it over the cylinder, it zooms in on the water. So the biggest challenge and the biggest mistake students make when they're reading the volume of a graduated cylinder is not correctly figuring out how much each line represents in change. So when we go from 10 milliliters at this labeled line, how many more milliliters are we once we get to that next line up or the second line or the third? And then the other thing that's really important to know is that Let's see if I can highlight this here. Um, water inside of a graduated cylinder curves. It curves up towards the edges, and this curve is called the meniscus. We always measure from the bottom of the meniscus. So even though these the edges go above that third line up from 10 milliliters, it's exactly at that third line at the bottom of the meniscus, so that's where we're measuring. So here's the steps that we would do in order to figure out how much change each line represents in terms of our volume. We can see two different labeled volumes, 10 milliliters and 20 milliliters. You take the larger number and subtract from it the smaller number. So 20 milliliters minus 10 milliliters is 10 milliliters. So we know that it changes 10 milliliters from one labeled line to the next. That's the first step. The second step is to count the spaces between those two labeled lines. So we would have one, two, three, four, five spaces between the 10 milliliter and 20 milliliter. And then the third thing is to take the amount of change, that 10 milliliter change, and divide it by the number of spaces, which was five. And 10 divided by 5 is 2 milliliters, and that tells us that each line on this graduated cylinder represents two milliliters of volume. So we know we're over 10 milliliters, so then the next line would become 12, 14, 16. And that tells us we would have 16 milliliters of volume. When you're deciding how much or doing the calculation for how much volume changes with each line, always double check. Like if I assumed incorrectly that these lines represented one milliliter, I can double check. It would go, if it was one, it would go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and this line should be 15, but it's not, it's 20. So that tells us right away that those lines don't represent 1. So even if you can't remember that equation of the difference divided by the number of spaces, you can do guess and check. You can see, is it 1 milliliter and check, and it's not. Is it 2? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. It's 2. So that's another way is just doing guess and check. So this first milliliter, our first graduated cylinder, each line represents two milliliters, and there's 16 milliliters of water in the cylinder. Let's look at the second one. This time, the bottom number is five milliliters. The top number is 10 milliliters. 10 milliliters minus five milliliters is five milliliters. So we know it changes five milliliters in those two lines. And if we count the spaces, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces. So again, you take the amount of change, which is 5 milliliters, divided by the number of spaces, which is 10. And this leads to another common mistake. Students always want to take the larger number and divide by the smaller number. But that is not what is happening here. We are taking 5 milliliters of change divided by 10 spaces, and 5 divided by 10 is 1 half, or 0.5. So each line here represents 
one half of a milliliter or 0.5 milliliters. And let's double check that. Five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten. So that checks out. So knowing each line is 10, or is sorry, each line is 0.5 milliliters, and we measure from the bottom of the meniscus, which is in line with this, we go five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half milliliters. So the second cylinder has eight and a half milliliters. And then finally, the third, we have 10 milliliters of change between 30 and 20. And there's also 10 spaces if you count them out. 10 divided by 10 is 1. So each line represents 1 milliliter. And if we double check that, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That checks out as well for 1 milliliter for each line. So we start with 20, 21, 22, 23 milliliters in this third one. So that's how we read a graduated cylinder. And then in terms of actually figuring out the volume of a new object like this rock, well, there's two ways. This first one is just pure water displacement within a cylinder. Like we already mentioned, this cylinder has 16 milliliters in it. If we add the rock, it's going to add volume to that cylinder, so the water level is going to rise. And the water level will rise by the exact volume that the rock is, by how much space that rock takes up. So if we drop that in, the water went up, and we can now see we're at 20, 22, 24. We were at 16, and it went up to 24. So if we take the final volume, which is 24, minus the initial volume, which was 16, that'll tell us the volume of the rock. And 24 minus 16 is 8 milliliters. So the first option is to fill a cylinder to a known volume, 16, or any known volume, it could be 20. And then you add the rock and see what it changes to and subtract those two numbers to get your volume of the rock. That's what you'll have to do if you ever test this in class at Blevins because we don't have overflow cylinders, but overflow beakers or cylinders are the better way to do this. So in this system, you fill up the overflow cylinder until it's completely full and the water starts to pour out. That means it is absolutely as full as it can get. And then you place this other beaker in a place where you can capture any water that overflows. And if we were to add this rock now, you can see some of that water poured out. If we were to do that again, I can add this water back in. Just watch really carefully as we add the rock, water pours out through that spout. And that means the volume of the rock is now in this beaker. And this now allows us to use a, a finer cylinder, a, a more accurate graduated cylinder. So I pour this in, use the magnifying glass, and we can see that it's five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven. It's more like seven and a half milliliters than eight. So this allows us to be more accurate with our measurement of the rock. So for this gizmo, this is the method that you're going to want to use, using that overflow beaker, dropping the object in, collecting the overflow, and then adding the overflow to the cylinder. And then you can record the volume of each object as you do that. So that is the instructions for this, uh, for this gizmo. And again, you're going to be responsible for identifying the volume of the rock, the prism, the silver sphere and the marble. You're going to need to find all of those using the water displacement method. Uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Uh, talk to you next time.